some of the bottom dwellers of the NBA. Yeah, they, they did bottom dwellers, but they all got hard. Uh, if you look at where Detroit came out, they played them hard. You look at where OKC played them hard. Tonight, they played them really hard. You look at Westbrook and Bradley Beal, an all-star, came out and gave them 30 piece to piece, you know, 60 points plus with those guys. And when you have dynamic guards like that and you're missing one of yours, it's going to be a long night. Yeah, I mean, look, in this game, if, if you allow teams to feel like they can, can beat you, then, you know, we have guys like Westbrook and Bill and, you know, well-coached team, they're, they're probably going to do it. And so that's what happened. The Lakers had a 17-point lead. Uh, they took their foot off the gas. They made some really stupid, silly turnovers, stopped executing, stopped moving, and uh, they didn't deserve it. It was an ugly win. If I were coaching, I might, Rob, I might have them practice about 30 minutes after this game because it was, it was something they needed to, uh, to play well. They played well, you know, enough to win this game and to come out in the third quarter. And, and look, the Wizards are good. They got some good players. They got two on the street. exciting players. They're, they've been winning. But when you have a 17-point lead, you have to come with a different mentality. They stop moving the ball. Look, I don't mind when the ball is in LeBron's hand if he's hot, but when he has it, there's not a lot of ball movement going on down the stretch. And that's why they were difficult getting shots. You know, there was no movement. The defense was set right on him. And uh, there was just, you know, not enough to, to overcome the victory. So they didn't deserve it tonight. They didn't deserve it. And, um, you know, Washington played well down the stretch with some other sequence, players James. to hit some big shots. Last sequence here. LeBron with seven seconds. Pulled up from, the, from long range. And Kuz gets the rebound, kind of chucks it up. And there's your ball game. Not, not a thing, too, Geeter. LeBron's getting a little tired, I think. How many minutes tonight? Over 40. 40. Yeah, yeah see, tonight was uh, 43, minutes. James. He's been that's over 40 a, four times this year. They've you, all been in the overtime. They got to they start taking a look at that, even though they need wins and they need uh, LeBron. Uh, they got to play without him sometime and, and, and let, the, let them get back into the motion like they, like they did in the, in the first half. They, the ball was moving. They were getting some, some, some decent yeah. shots. Yeah, well, you, 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 you mentioned something earlier, James. You said coaching. <clears throat> um, and we know Vogel is huge on stats. You're not looking at the stats and see where this guy has only played 23 minutes and he's giving you 26 points. Montrezl Harrell. Montrezl Harrell. And, and I think sometimes coaches get so caught up in shooting threes that you think you have to win a game by shooting threes. Montrez was killing on the inside. He was yeah. getting rebounds. He was getting points in the paint. And they had a lead. They stopped going to him, start shooting a lot of threes. Montrez is not in the game. That hustle guy, that energy guy. And you start going downhill. So he goes with Gasol a lot down the stretch in that fourth quarter in this overtime. Must be a defensive matchup. What are you seeing from Gasol defensively that, 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 that you're not seeing from Obviously the size, but I mean, because we were all thinking maybe, hey, th there was a time where they were stagnant. You need a guy like Trez in there. Well, for me, watching that, you watching Lopez. Lopez. You can guard Lopez. I can guard Lopez. So you can still put Montrez in the game because Montrez was going to work on I know Lopez probably got a couple of jumpers on him in the first quarter. But Montrez figured him out. Montrez said, oh, I know what to do. I'm going to swipe him down low so he can't get the shot off. And Montrez is a very smart player. He took a huge charge mm -hmm. down the stretch. And you got to have guys like that because you had that one moment in the game where LeBron and Gasol switched. Gasol got blown by. Mm -hmm. Got blown by full lap. If Trez in there, at least you get a better mm -hmm. on-ball defender than, than Gasol. And I think there are moments like that where you got to sometimes – I know this is your rotation. You're not used to having Trez down the stretch in the game because you usually have AD in there. Hey, he's rolling for you. He's a good defensive player. He's a smart player. He's a hustle player. You have to use him. I agree. I agree 100%. Uh, you know, game plans are just that. They're game plans. And sometimes, you know, you have to throw that away and just play by the feel of the game. And you needed energy. You needed extra possessions. You needed, you know, uh, you needed your, your Montrez Harrell in there. So, I know Marcus All plays his role. He can knock down the three and has knocked down the three. But I, I would agree with you there, Rob. You know, he was he was effective. Um, you know, he was he was enhancing what LeBron does out there as well. So yeah, I mean it was a, it was an ugly loss. And everyone's gotta take a look at it. Coaching staff and the players. 17 point lead. You come out and, and you play like you're down 17 in the first six minutes of the third and you put it away. Washington, you know, I don't think they had that fight in them if, if the Lakers had come out and, you know, played strong, but they let them back in.
And when you let them back in, everybody gets excited. Westbrook, you know, Bill, uh, everybody's shooting threes then. Uh, Lopez is scoring. So they felt like they need to keep their streak going because the Lakers kind of gave them an opening. You know, timing is everything. And it just, uh, it, AD goes down and you feel like Dennis Schroeder is really going to step up as that number two. He has 24, 24 points. We're talking about it. And then he goes out for the health and safety protocols. And he's really missed these last three games, especially in times like this where you see these long stretches for the Lakers offensively where they're not getting a bucket. They're going seven minutes in the third quarter, nine minutes over stretches. Uh, Wizards are going on 21 to nine runs. They went on a 51 to 27 run from the nine minute mark until the middle of that fourth quarter, third quarter of the fourth. That, 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 that's where you're missing a guy like Dennis. Someone, James, who can create a shot for himself or for others, not name LeBron James. Yeah, he's well missed. There's no question. I think uh, that 17 point lead may have gone to 23 or 24 with shooting the game because not only does he create for himself, uh, he's, a, he's a willing passion when, when Montrez is in there, those little internal passes. And he also is a defensive threat, you know, on Bill and Westbrook. He has a tendency to stay in front of people a little bit longer than most. Uh, but I think even without, uh, you know, yeah. shooter, you know, allow somebody else to handle. Set some picks for LeBron. Let him come off of something so it's unpredictable. It is very predictable when he has it. And, you know, uh, he spends a, about five or six seconds, eight seconds, you know, just trying to figure out what he's going to do, and there's nothing going on, no movement. Yeah. Now, in the second quarter, they were, they were moving, they were slashing, they were doing a lot of things, and they got away from that. So I love having elite players uh, down the stretch, but I think guy's been playing a lot of minutes. He's been carrying them on his back. You, without Shooter, even without Shooter, you know, you got to run that little curl play for Pope. Run that little curl play for Kuzma. They, they're scoring. Yeah, and they ran Kenny off that and, screen. And, and, hit that and, three. And, and, yeah. and, you, and you can't be unpredictable. And then the silly turnovers. <clears throat> you know, I, I saw one where Wes Matthews got a steal and just let it go. Uh, just He just let it go without, without knowing where the defense was. There were three or four of those where they could have, you know, enhanced their lead or gotten back in the game well. They just, uh, it was an ugly game. And I don't know whether they're tired or uh, fatigued, but that was one that was uh, unacceptable in the third quarter. Frank had mentioned fatigue for sure playing a factor over this last few weeks. And, and, he, and he cited the, the, the overtime games for, for, for a big part of it. Coming off that seven-game road trip, you go three overtime games in a row at home. Yeah, it, when you one do, was double. Yeah, when you do that, you got to realize, I know, you know, Steve Kerr did one of the smartest things you ever say. He did. He, he told someone, I'm not playing because... Steph Curry? Yeah, Steph Curry. Uh, when Steve Curry said Steph Curry, I'm not going to play him because I value him as a player more. And I think Vogel needs to look at LeBron and say, I don't care, LeBron. Me, you can be mad at me all you want. I value your body. I value what you bring to the team later on down the line because we, we don't want to lose games, mm -hmm. but you are more important than us down the street. <laughs> you're going to be fresh because we don't know what this league gonna do when it comes to playing games. We don't know when the All-Star game's gonna be. We don't know when the, league, the second half of the schedule come up. We don't know how many games he's gonna have to play in a row. Mm -hmm. So right now, take care of the now and let other guys play. And they had some moments where THT brought the ball up and LeBron yeah. gets off it. THT does a good job. He runs the offense. And